Hi, I'm Colin. I'm a first year student of European Studies Bachelor at the uh, Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences at Maastricht University. Uh, today I've got the very rare opportunity to interview the Dean of my faculty, so I'm going to pose him some questions and see, uh, see what he says to me. Hi Professor, so it's uh, really Hi, great to uh, get to meet the Dean of my faculty in person. My pleasure. So obviously I'd like to ask you some questions, don't often get the opportunity to do that. Um, so could you first of all maybe just introduce yourself briefly? Yes, I'm trained as a philosopher in Groningen and I did a PhD, uh, well, part in Groningen, part in Maastricht, because during my PhD I moved to Maastricht. And basically in what a discipline is. What is a discipline in science, in particular in social science, and why do we need disciplines? Okay. And what, um, what is exactly sort of your, your area of expertise in a bit more detail? Well, since I think st it still is the philosophy of social science, of okay. what, what makes social science a science. But when I moved to Maastricht, we created interdisciplinary programs. Uh, so there is still philosophy in it, you know, but a lot of people don't really teach the history of philosophy over here. So it was really something quite new. Yeah, it's really quite new, yes. And I got interested in utopias. Because an utopia is an interdisciplinary thing, you know, it's, it's, uh, sometimes it's a novel, but it's about yeah. the future, it's not just fiction, it also has a political meaning, do we have to take these utopias serious, are they a threat for society, that kind of issues. I got interested in that kind of things. Right. And that moved into an interest in the future per se. Modern society is really obsessed by the future. And that's really what you've brought to, to Masters University since, since being here. What, um, I know that you also do um, research as well. Could you maybe just quickly explain what sort of research you're doing at the moment? Well, research is a big word now. I'm, I'm a dean now for five years and there is very little time to do research. So I, I, I do some lectures and, and, and do some publications, mainly in, in the area of the future of, of the university. Okay. Does the university have a future? You would say it has because, we, you know, we live in a knowledge economy, but there is a kind of paradox. Uh, on the one hand, you, you would say knowledge is getting more important in our society. On the other hand, there is limited resources for, the, for universities. Universities have to renew itself. There is more competition between universities. Right. Well, what's the direction? Where should we go to? So you're, still very, you're very closely involved in, in what's going on at the university as yes. well. So does that mean you still teach at the university? I guess still, I, uh, sorry, I still I give some lectures on these issues. Uh, I also teach, not really courses, but lectures in courses on the history of social sciences. Okay, excellent. I mean, you still enjoy being closely involved in everything that's going on. Yes, and I also coordinate the honors program. Okay, and um, what is it exactly that you really like about this faculty? What um, I know there's a lot of international students, I know there's a great international feel, but what exactly is it that you like about it? Well, what I like is that it is still new. Uh, the university is new, it, is, it has been established 35 years ago, the faculty is even younger, so it, it means that we don't have disciplinary programs. You know, when you go to a, an ordinary university, you can study philosophy, you can study political science, history, etc. There's nothing wrong with that. But when we created new programs in the 90s over here, we said, let's do it differently. So you, would you say it's still a unique opportunity now for students to come here and to study something different compared to what might be offered elsewhere? Yes, you know, because students want to study because they want to contribute to society and also to research, well, not just to research, also to society, play a role in society, make a difference. For instance, if you take European studies, make a difference in Brussels or in, 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 in capitals of nations who have something to do with Brussels. And then the, the design challenge for us was how to make a program, an academic program, which really can make a difference uh, for these kind of students. Right. And the easy solution would have been, okay, let's just create a disciplinary program in political science. But if you do that, you get all the history of the discipline in it, etc., etc. And we thought maybe, no, that's not the right way to do it. Because in the world out there, for instance, if you go as a, as a, as a student at European Studies, if you go to Brussels, you have economics, you have law issues, 
you have social issues, uh, you have to deal with culture and all these things. So it's not, it's not possible to look at the world from just simply one no, perspective? No, the world is not divided into disciplines. Yes. The university is divided into disciplines, but the world not. So what attracted me to this uh, faculty was the fact that I can really um, use a broad range of disciplines in my studies. Um, could you though maybe just explain a bit more why that's important? Well, first of all, I'm happy to hear that because that is really what we also meant to create. Uh, and not just a collection of disciplines. Uh, if you study European studies, uh, it's not just a course in, 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 in political science, a course in history, a course in philosophy. We really wanted to get as close, to make the program in such a way that it comes as close as to real life problems as possible. And in real life, problems are always mixed. They have an element of law in it, or of history in it, of economics in it. So we said, okay, if we take European studies, you know, you should have law in it, economics, and all these other disciplines, but in an organized way. And, and that was really the, the, the design challenge. So we said, what is Europe? If you study European studies, well, Europe is diversity. Diversity in history, diversity in culture, diversity in languages uh, and political systems. So the first year, the overarching theme of the first year is how do we handle diversity in Europe? And then we approach that overall problem from a law perspective, from an economic perspective, from an historical perspective. And the second year is on integration. Because you know, that is what we're really into now, you know, we want to integrate Europe. And but how are we doing that? Yeah. So that is then the main issue of the second year. And then of course we had the third year, how to combine diversity with integration. Uh, and that is at least, you know, what was the, the big idea behind the program. And it also gives, I think, coherence to all these different elements in the program. So it really helps me to understand Europe from all perspectives rather than just one point of view. Yes. Uh, and that has been always our uh, approach. Apart from European studies, we have another also interdisciplinary program in, in, in the faculty, arts and culture. And again, it's not just, a, how you say that, a bunch of introductions in, in, in disciplines. And sometimes you have that in other universities, you know, when they have a broad program, it's just a, an introduction in philosophy, an introduction in art, history, etc. So they really give you the tools to look at the world in a different way. Yes. yes. But, but it's also the challenge, you know, we want to introduce students, for instance, in arts and culture, in philosophy, in history, in art, uh, in sociology, but you only have three years, because on the continent the bachelor program is three years. So how to do that? And then I, you have to really to approach uh, the study content from a different angle. There we said, let's focus on the main moment in Western civilization. And let's organize all our courses around these main moments. Take the scientific revolution. That has been a main moment in, in, the, in the history of Western civilization. So we, so we design a course around that theme. But not just approaching it from an historical point of view, also from an art, perspective from a philosophical perspective and we integrate these disciplinary perspectives in the course. Great. And what would you say you really like about the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences? What is it that makes it so special? Well it is this, this that, that we are innovative in, 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 in designing programs. We're not just repeating uh, uh, or copying programs uh, you also can do elsewhere. We try to be as close to current events as possible in our programs, in European studies, but also in arts and culture. And I guess that's reflected in the location of the university as well. Yes, Maastricht is, uh, of course it has a long history, you know, but it is, became famous because of the Treaty of Maastricht, which really gave a new boost to, to, uh, to Europe. This is the birthplace of the Euro. And maybe I know it is debated sometimes nowadays, but it's really a step forward. So we are always looking into the future and, and that is also, if you go to this faculty, maybe you can also, I hope you recognize that, you know, we are future oriented. Uh, we are flexible also, I would say, in the good sense of creating new programs or new courses in programs if we think, you know, that is, that is really needed in terms of what happens out there. And I also noticed that there's a very international aspect, there's a lot of um, international students. 
that's also part of you know being innovative. It's uh, at this moment all our programs are taught in English. Uh, and we said, you know, we are here in Maastricht, it's in the utter south of the Netherlands. We can create another Dutch program, but that makes no sense. Now, we are a European city, so we want to create European programs. Not just European studies itself, but also the other programs, and also our master program. So we want to attract students from all uh, uh, sides in Europe, but also outside Europe. And not just for being diverse, we also think it adds to the quality of a program. For instance, if you take European studies or a master of European studies, if you have in this master not just students from the Netherlands or from the UK, but also from Ukraine, as we have, or from Moldavia or from Georgia with scholarships, they also give us a new perspective to Europe. And they also really add something to the program. And that brings me to another key issue, I think, of, of, of studying in master, that you always study in small groups. So these students meet each other from day one in small groups and they discuss assignments, they discuss literature, and they also discuss their perspectives on Europe. That's great, so you not only get the perspective of the professor but also of the other students who are part of this yes. European community. Yes. Of course we have lectures, but just one lecture a week and next to that we have work groups, seminars, students discuss assignments. In a sense we try to simulate the research attitude from day one. And so a core part of this, of course, is the staff. Without the yes. staff, uh, none of this yes. would be possible. Could you yes. maybe just tell me a little bit more about uh, the staff of this faculty? Yes, also a very international staff, a very young staff, because we have grown since the 90s very fast. Our arts and culture program turned out to be very popular, also European studies. So I would say the majority of our staff is now between 30 and 40 years. Uh, a typical staff member now is somebody who uh, has done their bachelor maybe in Bulgaria, then went to the UK, then took a PhD in America, and for some reasons want to come back to the continent and ended up in Maastricht. That's great. So, I mean, the staff really also reflects just how international the yes. whole university is. That's great. And so, just maybe in a short sentence, could you say exactly why you think that students should choose the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences at Masters University? I know that's a tough one. One sentence, yeah, because there are so many reasons. Uh, well, I would say it's, it really brings you something for the rest of your life. Uh, meaning, you know, it's not just, of course, it's not just an academic training, it's an experience. European studies in itself, because it com it, you have all these co combinations of perspectives. It also gives you a very good background in terms of skills, because if you go out there, you know, in the job market, you have to work with in teams. You have to uh, do research in, in a very short, on a very short notice. You have to give presentations, and that all these kind of things will learn you from day one. Uh, so that is. Well, is that one reason? Well, it's a bunch of reasons. The city itself is also a reason, I would say. I agree with that, definitely. <laughs> so, I very much enjoyed speaking with the uh, Dean of the Faculty. I think he's given some very good reasons for studying at Masters University. He's actually summed up very nicely why I came here in the first place.